what is the TAC's role in delivering benefits? Henry Karras of Henry Karras and Associates is here today, and he's going to answer that question and more. So Henry, thanks for being here today. My pleasure, Cindy. Well, Henry, how does one make a claim to TAC? The general way that most people do is once they've been in an accident and injured, they will contact the TIC, and the easiest way is by telephone. And the TIC will take the information down over the phone as to what has occurred. They'll take basic information, and then they will send the person that information by mail for them to fill in the remainder of the claim form, which is now quite extensive, confirm the information that has been given, sign off, and return it to them. That's the general way it's done. Another way it is done quite commonly is that if you are quite seriously injured and unable to do it for yourself and in hospital, the hospital staff will do it for you and get you to sign off on the form um, as soon as you can. But the benefits from the TAC will start to come right away as long as the hospital confirms it is a road accident. And when should someone make a claim to TAC? The legislation is not so friendly on that. It says that you must make a claim within one year of your accident. And then there is a provision for it that it can be extended up to three years if you have a reasonable excuse for your delay. If you don't get it in within the one year or you don't have an excuse for the three-year extension, then you are unable to make a claim ever again for that accident for the remainder of your life. So I tell clients to get it in as soon as possible and definitely within the one year if they can achieve that. Okay. What benefits should I be entitled to once my claim is accepted? Well, the TIC will send you a letter which will kind of give you a brochure and some pamphlets about the kind of information that you may need. But some basic benefits that should come your way right away are, one, covering your medical expenses like a hospital stay, your ambulance stay, and things of that nature. Um, also, income support should come to you quite quickly um, in terms of trying to map out what you were earning before and what you're entitled to under the legislation. There are a little bit of gaps about what they'll cover, but that should be coming your way so you're not felt too much at risk. And then there are other benefits that flow from the legislation which come about as you need them. For instance, as you get discharged home from any hospital, there's care that can be provided at home. As you may need support to get back to work, there may be support with that. If you even have, are studying, there may be support to help you get back to um, school or to university. There's a tremendous amount of extended benefits that are available. And it's all about knowing which benefits you can access that makes the, quite a difference of what TIC will do for you. And how long do these benefits last? Well, in some respects, they can last for the remainder of your life. The medical and related expenses for medical treatment will last for the remainder of your life. The income benefits probably have, for most people, up to three years of a time period. You can get more than three years, but you have to be quite seriously injured, quite severely injured, in fact. And then there are other benefits like home help and stuff that can be extended for the rest of your life. So the legislation has some stops and some extensions, and knowing which ones are which are kind of important for the person injured. Henry, what if I wish to contest a decision made by TAC? Well, TAC is making decisions all the time as a government agency. And the way the system works is that government agencies are subject to review. They're subject to review as a government agency at VCAT, which is the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal, which has the authority to review decisions made by TIC. And TIC in their letters to you will indicate that there are a number of ways you can review them. You can review them by an internal review or by an application to VCAT. Now, internal reviews may be helpful. My experience has been that they're not so helpful. VCAT applications, there is a strict time period for that. You must, must make that application within one year of the time the decision is made. If you fail to do so, you lose that right. And if you ask, like some people do, well, maybe I'll ask for a review and maybe that will re-trigger my time. No, you must go back to the first decision. So lots of people don't contest decisions early on when they should. And do I need a lawyer to help me with my claim? Um, my experience has been that lawyers are extremely helpful in understanding the legislation, in getting access to the benefits that you need, in contesting decisions that are inappropriate. Most of all, I think a good TIC lawyer will educate you on what the system can deliver. It is meant to deliver a lot. So my recommendation for almost every person that I know of is get a lawyer because we can make a vast difference in what TIC may deliver for you for the rest of your life. Very helpful information. 
Henry, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure, Cindy. Until next time, this is Cindy Speaker for Victoria Law TV.